Cause I'm the data guy, making bikes fly high, diving deep into the data, reaching for the sky, from ETLs to data lakes and pipelines that don't break. Tune in, hang on, and let's make data great. Hey y'all, data guy here. And today I got a viewer request video on how you can create uh, an ETL workflow taking some data from a Spark instance and bringing it into a Cassandra database. So Spark is a multi-language uh, engine, basically it's an open source uh, unified analytics engine for really large scale data processing. So a lot of times you'll actually be doing Spark to run your transformation as I'm gonna kind of show you here. And then Pachi Cassandra is an open source distributed NoSQL database. Um, so just really good for high scalability, high availability um, for really, really large amounts of data. Um, and no single point of failure because it's a distributed database. So less chance of you know all your data being corrupted. Um, so to get started here, I'm just using uh, Astro CLI generated uh, local Airflow environment. And in my requirements file, I have the providers for Spark and Cassandra. And so even though there is an official provider for Cassandra, there isn't an operator. So we're actually gonna use it as a hook uh, within a Python function. And then we'll also have this uh, Apache Spark provider, obviously, so we can uh, send a job to Spark, get our data out. So the way Spark will work is you know, you submit a job to extract some data, set an output location for that data. Um, and then we're going to use actually a API to just take that output data and bring it directly into Cassandra so that we don't have to store it in an inter intermediary location. Um, and so I'm using just open source Spark because someone said Spark in the comment, but you might be using Databricks, which is, you know, just a managed Spark service. And that might make some of this a little bit easier just because like you can manage it all via there. But I'm just gonna show you what Spark looks like and the general output will be the same and you can still reference the output of a Databricks uh, run job. So conceptually it is still um, the same stuff. So now after we've got a requirements file uh, set up, we will uh, set, I'll bring in all of our packages that we'll need. So here we'll need the Airflow DAG object. Sorry, I'm just looking down at the data dog. He's a little injured right now. Um, and we will also have the task decorators, our Spark submit operator. So this is how we're going to submit a request to our Spark cluster to give us some data. Um, and then we also have our Cassandra hook that we're going to use to actually hook into our Cassandra database. Um, then date, time, time, and time delta just for scheduling purposes. Um, then we're just going to Initialize some default args. Um, this is not something you need to do, uh, but you know if you want to, you can set all these parameters. I'm actually not even going to bother with this. Um, and so then, what we'll do is create our Spark transform task. Um, so because we're using the task API, we're going to just create the tasks um, above the DAG, and then we'll reference them within the DAG code. So here we're just defining uh, Python Spark transform. Uh, sorry. Yeah, so we're doing a Python wrapper around a Spark submit job operator so that we can reference it as uh, the output of it and return it to the task API so our Cassandra hook can access it. So if you'll notice here within our Spark operator, you'll have your task ID, which is just Spark transform task, have a path to your local Spark script. Um, you can set the connection ID just within the Airflow UI, call it Spark default, um, and then have the configuration for what Spark cluster you want to use to run this job. Um, so here, you know, just have how many executor cores. I'm keeping it obviously really low because I don't want to really run a huge job. I'm just going to transform some dummy data here. Give it a name for the job, application arguments. And so this is the important thing here is you'll need to have, just make sure you know that this output uh, is accessible, um, you know, by your Airflow environment, it should be, but just, you know, make sure. And then do XCOM push. And so what this means is that it will push the output of it as an XCOM um, when it, once it executes. So we'll need this so we can access the value uh, with this then return spark operator dot execute. So here we're basically, and this is analogous to actually that we couldn't do this. Otherwise we'd have to return the output of this Spark operator. Um, so you can trigger an operator by using the dot .exploit function. Um, and then you can see here, we're just you know not passing any k -wars, just allowing it to take all these um, default parameters, execute it, and then return um, that output data. So what then this has the effect of doing is making that output data accessible as um, an XCOM for Cassandra to then grab. So then what we'll do after that 
is create our Cassandra task. Um, so here in our Cassandra task, uh, we have our Cassandra load task. So here, passing in the data, so bringing the data from the Spark executor, um, initializing our Spark hook, and then just using this, or sorry, not Spark hook, using the Cassandra hook um, with a Cassandra connection ID, Cassandra default, which again, you'll just set in the Airflow UI. And if you've imported the Cassandra package, it'll show up as an option there. And I'll kick over to Airflow UI and show you that in a second. Um, and then Cassandra hook, load table, select you know what table you want to load your data from to in your uh, Cassandra database, whatever key space you want to use, and then you reference to the data that you're bringing in from the previous task. So it's bringing in as data, nice and simple. And that's really it here. Um, so if you wanted to have an intermediary location where you're storing the data before Cassandra, you could totally just add a you know uh, S3 job or set the output path to S3 um, and then do a transfer from there into Cassandra. But I just thought this was kind of a cool way of doing it. I actually never, I was just playing around trying to build this uh, ETL for you. And um, I just thought it'd be kind of cool to try with the .execute method because I haven't seen that method to kind of like wrap the output of a traditional operator to allow it to use the task flow API. Um, so I hope you found it as interesting as I did. Um, then what we'll do down here is just uh, initialize DAG, Spark Cassandra DAG. Um, I'm just gonna take out these default args, schedule interval, time delta one um, as DAG, transform data, Spark transform task. Um, so this is just initializing that Spark transform task via task flow API giving it an output reference. So this is that task instance, and then referencing that down here in the Cassandra load task. Um, so boom, that's kind of all you need to, to actually have done to set this up for use. Um, and then, so I just wanted to quick show you also uh, what it looks like in the S3 method. So if you don't want to pass it uh, via task flow API, because maybe you know your XCOM database isn't big enough, then, or it's just a really huge data set, you can also just load it into an S3 hook. Um, and so here, we're just defining the output as um, the S3 hook. And you could also just alter this to be, hey, the output path is actually referencing the S3 one, um, and then add the connection details within the Sparks job operator. So I just kind of wanted to show you the alternate way, um, if you're curious about what that would look like, or if that's you know the workflow you were looking for, because um, again, this is a viewer request, so I wanted to kind of fit it to whatever the viewer is looking for, as I always do. Um, and so that's really all you need on the code side of things. So now I'll open the Airflow UI, show you what connections need to set up, show you what that looks like, and uh, send you on your way to go try it out. So now in the Airflow UI, you can see the uh, Spark Cassandra DAG took a lot of testing to get right. Um, so if I go over to our connections uh, screen. Let's create the connection to our Cassandra database first. I think that one's a little more exotic. So you're gonna need uh, to call it Cassandra default. Um, actually, what do we call it? Yeah, let's see. Um, we called it, yeah, Cassandra default, cool. So then choose the Cassandra connection type. And then the fields that you are absolutely gonna need are your host, your schema, your uh, login, so username, password, um, so and then finally whatever port you're running it on. Um, so if you're running a, you know, local Cassandra instance, this will be especially uh, useful. Uh, you might not need this if you're using you know cloud managed version of Cassandra, but then you might actually need to change some other ones. So I'm just running a local Cassandra instance, so I'm just going to use the port. Um, and then the other one we'll need to run create is a uh, Spark connection. So here, again, we'll just call it Spark default. Go into our Spark connection. Um, and we'll just use the generic Spark. So if you're using GDBC or SQL, uh, we're using PySpark, so no need to do that. Um, and then again, what you'll need here, the Spark one, you're really just gonna need your host because your host is gonna contain all your details. So uh, information about your cluster. Um, and so this is just kind of an example one, so you don't see my actual one. Um, and then you also, if you need to add a port, um, then it, you can do that. But you can also just most of the time just use the URL. Um, and then, you know, obviously, if you're using some kind of managed spark, you might need to add some additional parameters for that as well. Uh, then if we go over to the DAG, uh, very simple here, just two tasks, 
if we go to our successful task run and kind of see all we're doing here is just running a transform task to extract some data from Spark. Um, and that's actually one thing I should note is that to if you, the way this workflow is set up is if you're going to be you know transforming data, this script here that you're using for your application, your Spark script needs to be obviously extracting some data. So this is what you're using to take whatever data you're trying to get out of Spark, bring it into that enemy location, also run some transformations as you're bringing it out um, because Spark is really good at doing lots of data process or high speed, high scale data processing. So why not just use it, keep using it for the best at transform the data there and then bring it out into Cassandra. Um, so that's kind of the thought process there. Um, and then all you're doing is just taking that transform data um, and bringing it into our Cassandra database, just using that Cassandra load task. Um, and that is all I have for you today. I hope this satisfies your viewer request. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you around, drop any more requests or anything else you'd like to see. Uh, and the data guy will get it done for you. Data guy out. Peace.